Hello again, everyone. This is Joe Henches with Beyond the Chart, your source for exceptional video analysis of stocks, ETFs, and indices so you can become a better trader. Welcome back. This is the weekend edition. Today is Saturday, August 15th. So we're at the Ides of August. I don't think they ever say the Ides of August, but I thought, well, what the heck? It is the middle of August. So uh, we're going to take a look at the market action for the last couple of days and for the week. And then we're going to look at uh, our indicators, e key ETFs, sector ETFs that we typically look at. Three stocks today, and these are three stocks that I haven't looked at before, I don't believe. Herbalife, Concho Resources, and Dollar Tree. So these are three that I'm now following on a little more regular basis. I've kind of expanded my list. So we're going to take a look at those three today. Okay, and then a, a quick heads up, just I know I mentioned this uh, two, two weeks ago, I believe, but I am going to be transitioning beyond the chart website to a membership only type of uh, membership site, beyond the chart insiders. And uh, we're still, still going to have some free videos and things like that for people who, uh, you know, are watching and uh, don't want to become an insider. But I think there's going to be a lot of great value to being an insider and I wanted to give you a heads up on that. It's going to be in the next week or two and I'll, as I get closer I'll give you more details and let you know for sure when that's going to be happening but uh, we're getting a little bit closer. So all right let's get back to the Dow Industrials. The Dow was up for 69 points on Friday and really you know we had this big turnaround Wednesday and a big reversal type bar and then really I would have to say this follow through has been fairly muted to me we barely took out Thursday's high in terms of the trading interday uh, just a little bit on the Dow Industrials we did not on the S&P 500 and you can see that at least so far we are still in terms of lower highs trending down here in this path and lower lows in what we're doing. So we're going to have to continue to watch this, monitor this. Uh, I haven't changed my wave count. Let me go back to that real quick. Don't really see any reason to. I still think we're either in a, uh, you know, minute wave three, working a one, two, and a third down in terms of sub minuet, or minuet, I guess, waves, I call them. Next level down. And so really, I actually thought this would accelerate a little bit faster than what it's doing, but it may start to do that. We'll see. Uh, I'm looking for a clear five wave countdown to complete a first wave down, very much like what happened at the top in 2007. And you need a five clear five waves for that first wave down to uh, tell you that that's the direction we're now in. And we haven't seen that, at least not yet. All right, S&P 500, uh, clearly not the, haven't taken out the early July lows like the Dow did yet. Sure made a try on it on Wednesday, but, uh, you know, we bounced back and we had an inside day yesterday, although it was up, uh, you know, up eight points and but inside the trading on Thursday. So not much of a fall through at this point anyway uh, on the S&P 500. We still have this critical zone down here, 240. A 2040 to 2045 and uh, it when 2040 breaks I think it's going to rapidly come down to this other zone down here in the 1980 to 1990 range all right the Nasdaq the Nasdaq uh, was up on Friday uh, also 14.6 points um, again you, you really you got to say I mean, we got this reversal bar on on Wednesday here on the Nasdaq and we're not getting the follow through yet New York composite same story same literally same story now we uh, we're a little bit outside of Thursday's action here let me blow that up just a little bit and you know we're still continuing this topping formation although I must say the sim symmetry over here on the right side is not uh, not as clear with the left side as I would like to see, but we'll see what happens. Uh, it re so really this low or up in here is going to get taken out. You know, which one uh, is going to happen first and, and which one is going to happen. I, I'm leaning this way. I think we're going to continue to roll down and roll down over. We'll see what happens. If this breaks, and again, this is just like on Apple. Now, Apple broke, but if this breaks... 
uh, I'm expecting a move down to here based on the height of the head on this head and shoulders. You know, an apple is clearly broken down. We're not covering that today, but I have talked about it in the recent past. Russell 2000, continuing the downtrend again. I've talked about how this is more like the Dow in terms of the uh, lower lows and what it's taken out. On the weekly basis, the Dow Industrials, this trend line in here uh, that I've got, let me back up a little bit. This is, again, a weekly chart. Now, what I did was I connected the low of October 2011 and October 2014, okay, the two major pullbacks in my mind. You connect that, make a trend line, and we've broken that trend line. And so that's why I think it's a little bit that we're in the process of rolling over. Now, it's really interesting also that we have had one, two, three, four, the, well, the last four days, several of these indices have led the last four weeks down below the 10-day moving average. So uh, the other thing I was going to mention, I'm going to talk about this in the post. I came across an article that talked about how 10 of the last 12 Fridays, the S&P 500 has been down uh, this summer. And the last time that happened was the summer of 2007, right before the top. Uh, you know, before the top that we had in October 2007. So kind of interesting. We're getting it again in the summer and after having, you know, a six plus year uh, rally in the stock market. Uh, let's go back to the S&P 500. I did the same thing that I did with the Dow and uh, same trend line I got in here. And we're breaking it, though, is not as dramatic as the Dow is. But this one is pushed sideways a little bit more. Now, I do have this other trend line here, which is more short-term trend line uh, from the October low and uh, the February low in here. And it broke that and is pushed sideways. We'll see whether we can start to roll over or not. The NASDAQ, a similar type thing, similar type trend line. Uh, and the NASDAQ's not as close and hasn't broken down through it yet. Okay, so that's the picture here on the NASDAQ. And then we've got the New York Composite, which we've got the Russell 2000. Here's the New York Composite. And uh, again, here this scenario is, is a lot clearer even uh, in terms of the break of that long-term trend line, which to me really is the trend line of this entire rally. You can take this back down and say, well, okay, it doesn't, it goes all the way down here. You didn't use this very first point. That's fine. I'm using the major pullback points right here and right here, October 2011 and October 2014. And when you do that, this is the trend of the of the bull move, and it is starting to break. Okay, so that's the scenario that we've got, and um, you know it is what it is. And let's see. The next thing is the Russell 2000. Uh, on a weekly basis. Now, this one, did I change this? I may have used the original. I may have left this. I left this about the same. This actually is the October 2011 point. It's lining up a little more with the very uh, low of the March low uh, in here. But you can see that on the Russell 2000, the, uh, the October uh, one broke that in here. Uh, so slightly different. I mean, I could draw another trend line. And if you draw the trend line like those I just showed you, let me use my crosshairs. It's just a little to get to. It doesn't get to it. It's more like the NASDAQ. Oh, well, let's take a look. It's starting to do it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this, is, this shows you the difference in what you've got. And I'll make that a little darker. Okay, and so when you zoom in, you can see that this last week broke that trend line for the first time. Okay, so you know you always you know you draw trend lines and you continue to draw trend lines because the market's going to continue to break down. Uh, you know it's you either do it it's either going to do it when it's breaking up or it's going to do it when it's breaking down. But trend lines help give you a clue. All right, the next thing is the uh, short-term trading index, and hopefully I can find there we go. All right, this isn't telling us a whole lot new. 1.15 on the 10-day uh, moving average, basically right in the middle. Uh, we're just getting readings up and down, up and down, and basically the 10-day is just staying right in the middle, and it's been there uh, for the last one, two, three, four, five, five-plus weeks, 
Okay, let's take a look at the VIX. Okay, so the VIX dropped down 0.66 uh, on Friday. So we had the big rally on Wednesday, came up, reversal bar, and we've pulled back, continued to pull back down a little bit. Uh, kind of closed the little gap that was in here. Get rid of the crosshairs right now, I don't need them. See that little gap that was in here between uh, the high of Tuesday, or actually Monday, and the low of Tuesday. And uh, we close that, and we've still got the 10 above the 21. We'll see if that makes a difference or not. Let's take a look at the high low. I should be able to find that pretty quickly. The high low has bounced up. There was my, uh, 56 more new 52-week lows than there were 52-week highs. So 56 more to the, to the low side for the day. And you can see the trend is still rolling over down. And uh, we'll see how that continues to play out. Uh, the next one is the McClellan Oscillator, so we'll go back to the New York Composite because I've got that in here. And you can see that this is consolidating in here, uh, just slightly above the zero line, the dead neutral, and it's consolidating in here. So we're not at an extreme, uh, extremely oversold or extremely overbought uh, readings yet on the McClellan Oscillator. And the put-to-call ratio has, is at 0.76 on the 10-day put-to-call. So that's where that's at, and again, not at an extreme reading. Let's take a look at the uh, high yield bond fund. Absolutely not a whole lot of difference the next two days. I think I talked about this on Wednesday. It did break to a brand new low, fractionally below this low of December 2014. But then the next two days, we've basically done nothing, kind of in neutral land. Take a look at the uh, TLT. All right, TLT is continuing its trend, short-term intermediate trend back up here. It hasn't gone to another high, uh, new high over the last, I say new high. You know, the, it did not take out Wednesday's high is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, but we were up slightly. Uh, so the short-term trend still continues to push slightly up, and we'll see how much longer and how much strength we get into that. Let's take a look at the dollar. Okay, so the U.S. dollar index dropped on Wednesday, like I talked about, and then is just pushed sideways also. So this looks like, we're, we're getting this cross in here, it looks like short term is pulling back down, and so the dollar is dropping off here a little bit. Uh, and we'll see whether it's just very minor like it did in here, or whether it's something a little more serious. And that's why I have this question mark on this four, because I'm just not sure that this whole corrective scenario is done. All right, let's take a look at the next one is uh, USO, the oil. Okay, USO continues to push. Thursday, it dropped down to new lows, and uh, I don't think it went lower. I see Thursday, the low is 13.98. The low Friday, 13.98. But it was a lower close. So it uh, continued to push, and as you can see, this is all, we're in all-time low territory down here on USO. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you know, oil's not there yet in terms of the futures contracts, but uh, this ETF sure is. Let's take a look at gold, GLD. Okay, so we had this big move on Wednesday, this pop up, didn't quite close this entire gap, and then we just pulled back on Thursday and went sideways on Friday, basically, down one one hundredth of a point, 106.85 on GLD. All right, the uh, time for the uh, now this what I call the sector ETFs, kind of the look at semiconductors first. So SMH continues its push down, had this little uh, you know one day move up here. Actually, we've had two little counter trend moves. Actually, more than one day, three days here and two days here, and we continued the trend to the downside down here, and. Uh, you know, broke broke below this support here a few weeks ago, and she doesn't seem to be stopping. Let's say we're getting some bullish divergence on the RSI, um, but again, you got to let price. Let me the volume for some reason didn't come in. Come on, there we go. Now we got it. Um, DI minus is still above DI plus, and then here's this counter trend trend on the demand index, it could be breaking down. So that's the thing, that's the little bit of the caveat on divergence is you gotta let price 
work with you and tell you because sometimes you think you're getting this solid divergence and oh it's going to turn it's got to turn and then it breaks back down through the divergence trend line and just continues to resume the downtrend so that's what you've got to be aware of and just be on the alert for all the time all right the next one is the home builder and wow this this is a surprise but this is interesting so what's the message you know the home builders are telling us what the economy's great everything's going good we're building new homes all everything's fine i don't know i mean it hasn't rolled over uh it hasn't rolled over and uh you know maybe it's tied to the fact that they think the uh you know the tlt and different things are telling us that uh long-term interest rates aren't going to go up or anytime soon who knows uh, the action on Friday here, this looks a little bit like a hanging man type candle to me, which has the potential to be bearish. Uh, we'll see whether or not we get a down day on Monday. Uh, you get a down day and I think probably break that low, then that could be a sign of a little short term top. We'll see. Right now it's in a fairly solid short term intermediate and long term trend to the high side, at least according to the moving averages. Let's take a look at the financials. And let me pause. here's XLF. I figure I might as well pause the video and rather you guys spend time watching me try to search for it in my little list. So here's the XLF. You can see we got a pullback the last two days after this big breakdown here on Wednesday. And of course, this is the day when the market's all reversed, but this didn't even reverse close to coming back up and being a, a, an up day. But over the last two days, it kind of did. So we'll see whether or not this moving average cross in here is just meandering or whether it's going to mean something here sometime soon. Uh, but, uh, you know, lower low uh, in this little move down, but you could say it's an ABC. Uh, we'll see. Now, if it takes out this high, then you'll, you know, it might be a sign that something else is going on in a push higher. But it's going to have to take out this little short term high here on August 10th first. All right, let's take a look at IBB. Okay, IBB is short term little breakdown here. And uh, I've got this dotted line at 358. That's where it looks like some support came in once before over here back in June, early June. Uh, it kind of bounced off that area here on the 12th, which was Wednesday. And a little bit of a, it came down into that territory, didn't quite get that far on Friday. So we'll see whether 358 continues to hold or not. Right now, I'm saying the short term trend is down. The intermediate trend, the 21's turning down. Uh, we'll see whether it continues to push to the downside. And that's the way it looks, at least short term. Last one is XLE, the energy, energy ETF. So here's XLE, and this has had a decent little bounce from uh, this low on the 6th, which is a week ago Thursday, and uh, a little bit of a rally, and then, you know, on Wednesday, the push, and then we got uh, in two inside days here within this trading here uh, from Wednesday's range. Now, here's the, the negative I see. So you can push up, but, I mean, look how hard down this 21 is. The 50 is still down. 200 is down, or 233 and 55, I say 50, which you just made me think of something I was going to mention earlier and I totally forgot about. Um, but you know, maybe I'll do that before I get into the stocks. Let me go back to the Dow Industrials real quick. And that is one thing that, you know, on, my, on the Dow Industrials, I've got a, the 55 and the 233 day. Okay, so, and I mentioned this in the post write up. I'm going to talk about the death cross. Okay, some of you, a lot of you might be familiar with this. That's when the 50 day moving average crosses below the 200 day. Okay, that's the official way they define it. Well, I use a 55 and a 233, and yeah, it usually will do it and follow it also. So, uh, and I can't remember if it was on the Dow or on the SP 500, but it happened earlier this week. So, you know, it wasn't a ton of press about it, but they're kind of making the case that, oh, we got the death cross. Is that, you know, what does that mean? Is that it for the equities? Well, when you, when you look at this and say, okay, when's the red line cross the dark blue line? It's happened a couple of times since the top of 2007. But you got to go back. So you didn't cross there in 2013. You got to go back when it dipped down in 2011. Now, because I'm a little bit longer numbers, I've got 55 instead of 50 and 233 instead of 200. I lag that a little bit. So the death cross probably occurred back here late August, 
August, and here we are, August again. Um, yeah, 2011 crossed and had some pretty good selling going on. And in July of 2010, I believe this is, yes, in July 2010 we had a cross. But the 233 day was rising, you know, pretty good uh, when that happened. It wasn't flattening, wasn't flat. Now prior, and it didn't stay, it didn't stay, you know, very negative, and we didn't get a ton of uh, selling. It was just a little bit of a up down kind of move. And prior to that was the 2000, actually January 2008. Okay, prior to the huge crash in 2008. Okay, so those. Those are the last few times that have happened. And if we look at how the 233 day really is flattening now, and if I get that, I should get the cross actually, uh, you know, given that the, the uh, 15200 is. So we'll watch. We'll see if that happens. All right, let's take a look at uh, Herbalife. That's the first one to look at. Okay, Herbalife's got a nice little counter trend move going on here. And uh, let's let's just look at, Let's look at all the trading on Herbalife that I've got. Um, I've got, is that 2004? We got anything further than that? No, that's pretty much it. That's a weekly chart. Let's go back to the daily. All right, so, and zoom back out a little bit. Mm, you know, right now, let's just focus on, on, the, on the move that's coming up off this very low in January 2015. So we've broken a curve. You have the short term and intermediate pushing higher. Then you've got the 55 crossing above the 233 to the plus side. So, you know, all the all three moving averages have pushed up. And so you'd have to say short, intermediate and longer to are moving up now on or herbal. You see the Herbalife, Herbalife. That's the way you pronounce it. I'm almost positive. All right. So what are we looking at here? So there's a gap up here. Let me blow it up just a little bit. See this gap has not been closed and actually the high on this move right here is 61.95 and the bottom of that gap is 61.96. So we break above this high here and we're going to probably make it an effort to close this gap is my guess and we're going to run into resistance up here at the 69 to $70 uh, share range. Why? Because that's where previous selling happened before. Now we'll see how strong it is and how uh, much we repel, but this looks like one, two, three, four, and maybe a fifth wave up. And if that fifth wave gets up, closes that gap and pushes, it's probably going to run into resistance on 70, around 70. So that would be my take. That would be my guess. And you could almost make the case that we've got some kind of one, two, uh, third wave up, fourth wave, and we're doing a fifth wave. Uh, so we could have a five wave push that pushes up 270 and then corrects, corrects us five waves. All right, the next one we'll take a look at is Concho Resources, which uh, I'm not super familiar with these, but I thought this was a, like a shale oil drilling or something like that. If it is, I mean, this, it's, I'm, I'm sure it's oil related. It's doing very, very well. I mean, it's held up really well. I mean, look at this for the oil companies and everything that's going on. And again, I do need to do a little research on the company. I'm not super familiar with it. But um, what I did is I said, well, let me just focus off this low here from December 2014. It looks like I could count five waves up on this move here. And I think we've got an ABC corrective move back down. So if I take that bullish count that this looks like it's doing that and and one reason for that, you could sit back and say, well, let's, I think it uh, kind of broke some of this corrective action that was going on in here, at least the highs of that corrective move. And let me extend this up. And we will thicken that and make that a green line because I like to, you break green lines up and you break red lines down. So it looks like it may have ended that corrective action. We'll see. Uh, and this looks like five waves up. So if we're starting a new wave up, uh, and then we've got this pullback in here. And so this is what I'd be watching for to see, uh, does this continue to push up, continue to push higher and break this little 
green line right here, which it contains this little ABC corrective action that I'm calling an intermediate wave two. So that's the scenario on Concho resources. Uh, short term, it looks like it's bullish, looks like it's acting pretty bullish. All right, the uh, next one we're going to take a look at is Dollar Tree. Okay, here's all the trading I've got on Dollar Tree. So back to 1999, maybe late 1998, it was really choppy for the first several years, four or five years. And it looked to me like it really bottomed in here. Like, uh, And actually, I think there's more. If you go on a weekly chart, I think there's a lot more trading than that. Yes, back to 1995 is what I've got. So you can almost make the case that, you know, you got one wave up, choppy wave two, kind of pull back, and maybe we had a third wave up that uh, we're trying. And, and I think that we're in a fifth of that third wave, if that's the case. But let's, let's go back to the daily. And uh, let me go back down to what I'm... Now let me zoom back out of this for a minute. The point I wanted to make about this is this is a lower point than this point here. But this retraced almost all of it, but it didn't go past the beginning. So it's a valid wave two because wave two can retrace almost up to 100% of wave one. It just can't below go below the beginning of wave one. And so this looked like one, two, three, four, five way extended fifth wave in here. The lines I've drawn is just to give you a feel for the slope of the first wave, for the intensity of it, okay? And why am I doing that? Because you see this nice sharp slope here, and then this slope of this very strong wave three here, and then you see the slope over here of this wave, fifth wave. That's what's giving me conf confidence to say that this is a fifth wave just by the way it's looking and flattening in terms of its uh, rise in, type, in its move. So. When we zoom in, we say, okay, well, what's going on with this fifth wave? And the wave count is a little bit messy in here to me. I could make the case that this might be the fifth wave, and it could very well be. But you sure see some parallel line action in here. It looks a little bit like a throwover. And so right now, I'm a little cautious that we might be near the top here on, on Dollar Tree. We'll have to watch and see. Short-term trend is down here. Um, I'm looking, it's going to need to get support right in here at 74 and a half. And that's this dotted line, 74 and a half. You can see the short term trend line here was broken on the pullback. So a lot of times pullbacks can get messy, can get complicated, or all of a sudden they can turn sharp. So, you know, right now uh, I'm leaning towards the fact that this is correcting. And so that's what I'm going to be watching and see how the wave count plays out. But uh, that's the play on Dollar Tree. It's had one heck of a move. Uh, and uh, right now it may be, may be topping out. So we'll have to continue to watch that. Um, that's, the, uh, that's the message I'm getting on, on Dollar Tree at the moment. But we'll continue to monitor on, on, a, daily, on, a, on a weekly and monthly basis. So. All right, that's, uh, that's it for today. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with the uh, trade ideas video, which will be for subscribers only. That's password protected. Uh, and uh, then uh, on Monday with another update, we'll see how Monday uh, action goes. So uh, if you're watching this anywhere besides my website at johenches.net, head on over there and uh, check out the posts. and. Uh, uh, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Right now it's free and <laughs> you get access. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you further about as we migrate to a membership site. All right, this has been Joe. Everyone have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.